All right. All right, please, Samuel, go for it. All right, can you see it? We can, very good. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, yes, my name is Sam. I'll be uh, talking about um, the spontaneous formation of uh, multiply charged vortices in, in exciton polariton condensates. Um, all right, and can you see my mouse as well? Uh, I personally cannot, I don't know the other. Yes, me I see, but... Uh... Okay, okay, perhaps it's my problem. Okay, now I can see, very good. All right, okay, good, good, good. Okay, um, first, uh, a little bit of background on, on the problem of, uh, of multiply charged vortices, uh, just in general. Um, these have been looked at for, for a long time. Uh, I, I think we all know that in, in all kinds of Bose-Einstein condensates, uh, rotational flows are, are associated with, with vortex singularities, points where the um, density goes to zero and about which uh, the phase of the wave function wraps by some integer uh, multiple of, of two pi. Uh, now, in principle, uh, this integer number of, of two pi, the winding number, topological charge, can, can take on any integer value, uh, but in effect, uh, in, in, in just about all scenarios, uh, in most scenarios, uh, this, any, any charge higher than one uh, is dynamically unstable uh, and, and quickly uh, a multiply charged vortex will break apart into uh, a, a series of, of more stable unit vortices. Um, we can see in, in this experiment um, in the left, uh, that's a little bit big. Um, uh, a, here, a, uh, a doubly charged vortex has been imprinted on a, an atomic Bose-Einstein condensate uh, with a, a Laguerre Gaussian laser beam, uh, and, and you can see quickly uh, breaks apart into uh, a pair of, of unit vortices, which are, are more stable. All right, so the scenario changes a little bit uh, in, in, in the scenario of a very quickly rotated, rapidly rotated uh, condensate. Um, which uh, in turn in uh, a harmonic plus uh, superharmonic trap um, rapidly rotated will uh, result in some vortex lattice and eventually when rotated fast enough there can be some concentration of the vorticity in, in a low density core in the middle in one shared core. So this is sort of a form of a multiply charged vortex um, and in theory um, for a steep enough uh, potential wall and a rapidly rotated, uh, when rapidly rotated quickly enough, um, in theory, all vorticity can be trapped in, in one uh, vortex core, one shared core, but uh, this is quite difficult technically. And, and so this has remained elusive. Um, and I wanna add that uh, one, of the, uh, one of the most exciting uh, applications, potential applications for, for a multiply charged vortex is, is in the context of sort of cosmology in the lab, analog gravity, and, and so for those applications, uh, you really don't, you want a smooth uh, background around any uh, vortex structure, and, and so this doesn't quite cut it. So um, I'm not going to talk too much about um, exciton polariton condensation itself, um, because uh, I, think, I think we're mostly uh, well-versed, and uh, there, there are going to be enough talks on it. Um, but I, I do want to uh, introduce our, our model, which is uh, a, a complex Ginsberg-Landau equation um, for wave function psi, um, coupled to uh, a reservoir representing the uncondensed particles. Um, and I want to stress that um, in the system, we have uh, always some input, uh, a pump laser beam, um, which can take on any profile, and we always have some uh, leakage of, of, of photons. So there's always some, some loss, uh, term gamma. Okay, so this is going to be important. All right, so vortices have been seen in, in exciton polariton condensates um, it, it, for a while now, uh, most notably by San Vito et al., um, who showed that uh, a doubly charged vortex, when very carefully imprinted in, in some regimes uh, can be stationary enough to, to remain stable for the lifetime of, of the condensate, but uh, given any lateral momentum, uh, 
at all, they, they quickly uh, break apart uh, as, as would be expected uh, in other scenarios. You can see here. Okay, finally, uh, before we, we get into our results, um, I want to mention as, as was, was brought up uh, quite nicely in the end of the last talk, uh, that, that you can have uh, a pump profile, which is actually spatially uh, separated from the, the point of condensation. So here in this experiment, you can see the a ring pump profile actually causes a, uh, a condensation, uh, the condensate to form uh, within it. So here there's, there's actually decoupling between the reservoir uh, equation and, and our uh, condensate equation. So this is going to be quite important for us here. Um, so we're actually just going to start by trying to, to understand how this, this early formation, how in the early formation of, of the central condensate in a, in a ring pump system uh, takes place, what, what goes on. Okay, so just in, in numerical simulations of our, of our model, um, we're solving both equations here, um, uh, we, we see it, kind of what you would expect. So some condensation early on um, in the center uh, with, with vessel type rings. Um, and, and over time, this condensate kind of fills the space um, and is, is trapped by the uh, effective um, uh, trapping potential of, of the pump profile. But I wanna point out um, in the early stage here, you can actually start to see um, that one of these Bessel rings actually is, is a little bit special. There's a, a phase discontinuity um, around the annulus. So this is really a, a sort of a, a one-dimensional soliton, a dark soliton. Um, and these are typically unstable also to breaking down via the snake instability into more stable uh, unit vortex charges, plus or minus vortex charges. Um, so we might think that if we could have this stage last a little bit longer, that we might actually see this breakdown from this, this uh, ring soliton into, into vortex charges. So uh, here we have um, a 10 micron um, pump radius. And so just by expanding that a little bit, we, we can see if, if that causes the condensation to, to take a little bit longer to form. And so we can maybe see these dynamics. Uh, and as it turns out, just by changing this slightly, uh, we actually do start to see these, these dynamics take place. Um, you see again, early formation, uh, oh, um, condensate forms in the middle and there's some rings and then these actually break apart via snake instability. There's some uh, turbulent phase which then settles stochastically into, into some steady state. Um, and depending on the parameters, these, these will take on, um, to, for some parameters, more often than not, uh, a, a greater than unit uh, vortex charge. So this is, this is maybe a little bit surprising. And we can see this um, density on the left and uh, phase structure on the right condensate forms, vortices break apart and process and the turbulence will decay. Here we have three vortices left. And these will finally settle ejecting one for the last time, and we get our quasi-stationary state of a uh, doubly quantized vortex, which will then settle down and stabilize. All right, so a little bit on, uh, on the structure of these. Um, so if I, if I show the uh, radius of the pump around here in green, and I can kind of mark vortex core, the shared vortex core here of a, of a, a charge five vortex. Um, and here the phase structure again marked uh, at, at that point, the, the 
shared core. We can zoom in and, and see that the, the vortex singularities are, are very well within the shared core region, but are, are slightly, separ slightly separated, excuse me. All right. So we kind of want to look a little bit to understand uh, the structure of, of the vortex. Um, so to understand these, we, we start with our coupled uh, complex ginsburg landau equation here. Um, so again, from the spatial separation of the condensate and the reservoir, um, we, can, we can say that this term is, is negligible here uh, in, in our region of interest. And so this actually um, gives us the familiar form, setting that to zero, of the Dams nonlinear Schrodinger equation um, here. So taking the Madelung transformation uh, defined here um, and, and defining rho uh, as, as a squared and uh, the velocity as, as del s, um, uh, the the uh, nonlinear Schro the damp nonlinear Schrodinger equation uh, gives us two equations from the the real and the imaginary part. From uh, the imaginary part, we get uh, we get this relationship. Um, but since aside from the the small region around the vortex core, um, the the density is is more or less uniform. We can we can simplify this. So that the the radial velocity of, of the flow is is given quite simply as a, a function of, of the dissipation gamma. Um, from the real part of, of the nonlinear Schrodinger equation, um, we get this, um, uh, which is is just the steady state equation for uh, an equilibrium um, condensate where the velocity profile takes on the the role of the external potential here given by. Uh, taking the form u squared. Um, so if we rescale, this gives us uh, this final form um, of, of a reduced uh, equation. Um, uh, again, where it is simply the, the um, uh, there's an effective external potential, uh, which is an effective harmonic potential given by, uh, set by the, the um, dissipation rate. All right. So three minutes. Three minutes. Say again. Three minutes. Three minutes. Let's skip. All right. Thank you very much. So the um, okay. So we can also imprint these vortices, and and we see their dynamics um, here. Imprinting three vortices, which which coalesce, or two pairs of of, of double vortices, which which again coalesce. Um, and uh, if we if we plot the densities of uh, the the uh, isosurfaces, um, the, the, these low density regions um, here, we can actually see the kind of uh, paths that these take, these double vortices, uh, and we can see these these kinds of um, density oscillations, uh, which then settle down. So we can actually track these, um, listening far outside of the vortex. In a kind of analog of, uh, of, a, of a gravitational merger of gravitational waves, here of acoustic waves, um, and so we can actually listen to the mergers of of these vortices. Um, in plotting this over time, so imprinting far far from each other and watching and watching them uh, coalesce, we can we can listen and these emit uh, a natural naturally quantized topologically quantized. Uh, frequency uh, here, um, quite like uh, quite like um, an inspiring uh, black hole pair, which is quite nice. And and these this, these frequencies depend on um, uh, the topological charges of of the colliding vortices. So uh, finally, I I just want to uh, discuss the the limits of of the vorticity that, that can be supported in, in these ring pump systems. Um, uh, so the, the oh, sorry. All right. So to establish the limit on, on the multiplicity of, of the vorticity, um, the, the limit is set by the, the counterflow velocity, which is supported between the condensate and the, the reservoir just outside of it at the, at the pump spot. 
So um, this is this instability, this counterflow instability, is known as the the Kelvin-Helmholtz instability, um, and uh, this is seen in both quantum and classical systems. Um, but in this context, um, this sets in um, this this manifests as as the nucleation of vortices when a, the counterflow velocity exceeds the local speed of sound, um, given here. Now we know that at a certain radius, the the rotational velocity of the condensate at at um, at that radius is given here, so we can we can quite easily uh, determine the the maximum charge for some given radius um, of pump spot of, of of any other pump at which uh, there should be too much topological charge. There's, there's to to um, and exceeds and and the uh, the counterflow between the the stationary uh, reservoir and the condensate at, at uh, that boundary uh, exceeds the the speed of sound and and nucleates a vortex, which then causes in turn the reduction of of the total vorticity seen in these dynamics. Um, so plotting this as a function of radius gives us oh, the uh, this dotted curve and and numerical experiments fit quite well. So we can we can say quite safely that that the uh, vorticity is is in fact limited by this instability. Okay. I'm, I'm done. Thanks a lot, Sam. Great talk. So, uh, are there questions from the audience? So, Magic. Yes, hello. Uh, I hope everyone hears me. Uh, thank you, Sam, uh, for a very nice talk. And I have two questions, one very short, one just short. <laughs> so, <laughs> a very short question from an experimentalist point of view. Uh, uh, I guess that any imperfections or, for instance, cavity gradients, so it built in uh, gradient of energy, so a tilted bottom, right, of the, of the trough, would affect this dynamics. And I guess, and please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, that these beautiful vortex structures will not be uh, possible to observe. Is it correct? I'm sorry, can you... Um... Okay, so... Uh, so uh, yes. Yeah, so um, what I mean is uh, how how is, how robust are these uh, high highly charged vortices on um, defects in the sample? For example, if you consider some imperfections, right, ah. in the in the potential or a cavity gradient, so a tilted bottom of your potential. Uh, I see. So um, for for a, given some disorder, this is the um, it's quite robust. Um, for, for a tilt. Because uh, the tilt is quite uh, essential because for, uh, in many samples the tilt uh, is substantial. So then you have this additional, I, I, I guess that there would be some additional, you know, uh, flow yes, dynamics, so, right? So, so the, so, uh, oh, okay, I see, I see. So the disorder, no, so I, I can confirm um, from, from numerics that, that mm -hmm. this is fine, that it's robust against this for, for some tilt. Um, again, so the, the, one of the roles of uh, the ring pump is that there's an effective uh, trap action. Yes, so, so some, the, the, the vortex I would, I would imagine would simply not be quite in the center. Mm, okay, but it would still be it would it would still be strongly trapped within the, the vortex. Mm. Okay, and uh, second one, which is uh, a half comment and half a question, because uh, as you uh, d d develop the uh, the analytical uh, solution for the for the vortex, right, and the vortex properties, uh, your assumption is that uh, to neglect the reservoir equation in the trap, right? However, yes. in current experiments, there are at least few. A uh, few uh, evidence uh, that uh, even in this beautiful ring uh, trapping, there is substantial uh, reservoir in the trap. So the question is, uh, would it this be because I, I understand that the analytical uh, pr approach here, but uh, is uh, the question is if the reservoir inside the trap would affect formation of this uh, highly charged vortices. I'd, I'd have to I'd have to get back on that. I have to think about that. 
Okay, the, no worries. So the, the the exact analytical form, uh, of course, this this was this was necessary. Um, we we did have to assume that this. Um, so for for this exact analytical form, I I I, I don't have a good answer, but um, uh, for some but for some some reservoir existing in 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 the center, this this should still be fine. Mm, okay, thank in, you. In the numerics, this is this is still fine. Okay, thanks. Uh, uh, other questions? <clears throat> so I have myself uh, just a very uh, short questions about the why the system uh, the, the the charge uh, high charge vortex uh, is uh, stable against splitting in uh, uh, lower charge vortices is this due to the fact that there is an inflow of politons from the external towards the core or is something else yes that's 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 exactly right so there's there's an effective uh, trapping potential acting on these vortices, which is which is pulling them in. So the the fluxes of particles from from the outside, from the ring pump, um, are are constantly coming inside to uh, to replace particles lost by the, the dissipation. So this okay. this flow this flow is is forcing them together. So it's inward and it's connected to the fact that the isophase lines are sort of spirals in the yes. graphs that we have shown at some point. Okay, thanks, Sam. Okay, since there are no other questions, we thank Sam again.